Welcome everybody. I am Bill Courtright and thank you for joining me today on this episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast, Living Right with Bill Courtright, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress management. Hello and welcome back to the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Courtright and I am here with the amazing super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing, son? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Well, we're on our sixth take. I'll tell you, that's how I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today is Wednesday for the sixth time I've said it, and it's time for the meeting of the minds. This week, we are focusing on surviving the holidays, and today we're going to discuss avoiding holiday depression. So when I started researching this, I... I wanted to have kind of a week of more lighthearted holiday things, right? When I really started researching this, I didn't realize how much angst, is that a good word? Is it angst is a word, right? That people really do go through. It's pretty serious. So there's actually something called holiday depression syndrome. And there are many factors that can set this off. Unrealistic expectations, financial pressures, um, excessive commitments, all of these can cause stress and anxiety, especially at holiday time. So it's been found that holiday depression syndrome is caused because of the expectations for social gatherings with family, friends, and acquaintances. And what causes it is they would rather not spend time with those people. <laughs> And so it really, it throws them into a depression. I, I, when, I, when I'm telling you, when I was researching this, I was in a little bit of awe. That's what's causing it. So if I look at depression, depression is defined as a psychiatric disorder characterized by the inability to concentrate, insomnia, loss of appetite, feelings of severe um, despondency, and dejection. Self-doubt creeps in and affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. That's depression. Well, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical doctor or a psychiatrist. So I will not speak for those who suffer medically from an imbalance in chemistry in the brain. Because there are some, there are medical things. But I will speak to those who get those holiday blues. Because again, if depression is brought on by our thoughts, that's what they're saying. This, in other words, these people get depressed during the holidays. They're not depressed otherwise. Yeah. They don't have diagnosed depression. Yeah, if it's just one time a year, <laughs> yes. or right before you have to go to your family's house, there's, no. There's a problem, right? And I, when I was looking at this, I didn't want to take it lightly. I know you were teasing me before we started the episode. You go, what do you mean? You're going to knock these? No, I'm not knocking these people down. I want to understand because you think about it. If depression is brought on by our thoughts, right? And we understand here at Stress Mastery that thoughts are brought on by activated programs. And we can simply detach from the programs by watching our ego, thus controlling our thoughts. If this is all true, then why can't we control holiday depression? I, I just didn't understand it when I saw it. It's, it's such, it could be such a special time of year and people put themselves in this state. In fact, I think it's a program. I think, oh, it's the end of Thanksgiving. I gotta go into depression because it's a program. That's what I believe. Yeah, I, I think it's it's one of those things like if you, for the individual who doesn't get holiday depression is because they haven't had previous holidays that went bad. And, and, and again, you know, I'm not talking about people that really suffer from depression no, 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 because no, I, I understand yeah, the medical course. aspect of it. Yeah. I'm talking to you people out there that every year this happens to you and this is going to be a year you break free from that because it doesn't have to happen. So let's just take a look at some of the factors that have been associated with holiday depression. Unrealistic expectations. Well, the Hallmark movie syndrome. I don't know. I don't know if that's a word, but I watch Linda watching those Hallmark movies and the Hallmark movie syndrome. We want so badly to have the perfect holiday that we get stuck in the desire energy. So the desire energy of anticipation, obsessed, can't wait, driven, frustrated, manipulative, demanding, can even be selfish. These energies will, you know, fluctuate you through the red zone. You have a desire and you have this picture of the perfect holiday. Unfortunately, you don't control it. 
And what I mean by that is you can control you, but you can't control Uncle Joe or Aunt Betty because they're coming to the holidays, right? So these energies, desire energies will fluctuate in the red zone from desire to anger. Now you're pissed. To grief. Now you're sad. To guilt. You don't know why this happens every year. And your energy bounces all over the place. This is draining you physically and sticks you in the stressed red zone. This will equal depression. So remember something. Depression physiologically comes from burnt adrenals, adrenal fatigue. If you don't have diagnosed depression and it happens during the holidays, it's because you're not managing the stress. And when the adrenals are low, cortisol levels are low, cortisol pushes serotonin up in the brain so you feel good. Burnt adrenals will give you depression. And so look at what's happening. You holidays come, you stop eating right, you stop doing things, your whole schedule gets thrown off, you have all these things coming at you, and then you have this desire of the perfect holiday. You want to have the Hallmark syndrome. <laughs> Hallmark. Yeah, it's funny. You know, it's like, you know. Mom had the, the TV on the other day. She goes, yep. I don't watch it to the end. She goes, I know what happens. It all works out. Uh, it's a, you know, know, that's what we but, expect. And, but that's too. Linda too, right? Yeah. If we look at my wife, your mother, <laughs> Linda like always right. expects everything to work out perfectly. Yeah. And guess what it does for her? Yeah, Ever since the day I met her, I've never met anybody like that. But she really, that's her. So that's one of the things. If you look at it, you're trying to manipulate it. Now, let's talk about financial pressures. This is another factor linked to holiday depression syndrome. We want everyone to be happy, right? We want everybody to be happy. We want to give the presence that will create the happiness. When we stretch ourselves beyond our means for the holidays, we are basically in a pride energy level. We're trying to give everybody what they want. We're trying to make everybody happy again. Unrealistic, because you can't control other people. You might have planned a new gift, you got this gift, and you thought it was perfect, and then the person gets it and goes, oh yeah, I got one of those. He spent like two months on the perfect gift. You know, I got one of those. You know, that happens. You have tethered your gift giving to a pride energy. You've tethered it to a response. An expectation. An expectation. Thank you, David. So that's the pride energy. We put off any reasoning with the attitude, I will pay next year. And we run our credit cards, you know, and we get into debt, we max out our credit cards, we put ourselves in debt, and we're always thinking, okay, uh, I'll just pay it off next year. And what happens is, guess what? Next year does come. Faster than you are. expect. Faster than you expect. So that can cause a depression, right? So another factor is excessive commitments. Well, we talk about, if you have holiday depression, I'm going to tell you right now, if you only have holiday, holiday depression, it is a program. I am not a psychiatrist. I'm not going to sit here and diagnose you, but it's kind of crazy that only happens here. And that's what they're telling. That's what the, the studies are showing us. So it's a program. And so it also is that you've stressed yourself out too much. Remember the stress response, red zone, green zone. If you're stuck in the red zone, you're not going to sleep right. All these factors are going to happen. So one of the factors is overwhelm, Right. And it's excessive commitments. We are trying to do it all. We have work-related activities, family-related activities, social-related activities. This can become crushing if they get out of control. We sleep less. Our work goes undone. So we feel stress from there. We increase our alcohol consumption. It happens a lot during eggnog. the holidays. Eggnog. You know, <laughs> exactly. Eggnog. <laughs> and then we overeat. And we eat the wrong things. All of this equates to increased stress, overworked adrenals, and again, depression. You're seeing a pattern, right? Other important factors that have been linked to holiday depression. Holiday depression with the major holidays, such as Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and Christmas, just to name a few, many people enter these holidays with self-reflection of people they may have lost. So now the family, they've lost a very important family member and it's not there. And they start getting into depression because of that. Or people they no longer connect with, such as they don't have a good relationship with their parents, maybe their child or a sibling. And this can create a deep sadness. Well, of course, when you have a deep sadness comes loneliness, comes anxiety, all of which stresses their state. 
once again, they're in the red zone. They're craving sweets. They're eating, you know. It, you can see why it happens. Remember I always told you why. I want to know why. There's, it drove me crazy. You saw me researching it, right? I thought this was going to be a nice, simple show. Talk about this, you know. Uh-uh. I want to know why, why, why. Because if I understand the why, I can manifest the how. And so if you look at holiday depression, find those, those just those certain people who this time of year suffer from an affective disorder called SAD. It's a seasonal affective disorder called SAD. Now this I would say is different because this is actually physiological. And it doesn't happen down here in Florida, but it happened in Wisconsin. I can actually remember that a little bit. This is referred to as seasonal depression. And I would divorce this from holiday. I don't know why. I actually think this is a physiological thing that you're, you're not getting enough light and the days are darker. And it just, it's called SAD. It's actually a syndrome. It's actually not a syndrome, but an actual disease they call SAD. And some people are affected by the decreasing amounts of sunlight as the winter days get shorter and the colder temperatures prevail. You know, so that is a different factor. I think that the holiday syndrome, depression syndrome is really more a psychological factor. This is actually a physiological factor. Now that affects the, the things that factor into our life. And so when we talk about sad, that is a physiological thing. You have to fix it with light. It sounds crazy. It's actually, they say fluorescent light helps with it. Um, I used to do this, what I used to do when I was in Chicago. I, I used to use tanning beds. Now I was actually using it for my bodybuilding. It was weird. My bodybuilding competitions were always in the winter. I always thought, why are they in the winter? I kinda, but what would happen is by going into there, I would actually increase my moods. And I didn't understand why. And the reason is, is because you're getting light. So you can move to Florida, or you can go to tanning beds, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, you gotta get sunlight. So, so the effects that these factors play in our lives can be begin to affect us long after the holiday season. So when we look at this, these, this syndrome, like we said Monday, the key to controlling this is self awareness. Would you agree with me? It's like yeah, being you aware. Know what's That's what I want to do. I want to get people aware the after effects of holiday depression syndrome. This means you're going into January now and you're all like, everybody's got January. Oh, thank God it's January. Thank God it's January. And then also in January, you go back to work and there's stacks of work, right? You, you're you tired, you're not sleeping right because your body's going to take at least three to four weeks to reset from the holidays. People don't get that, right? All these intentions that you put out there that were making you feel better during the holidays really you don't have time to do it right now because you got to catch up for what you haven't done for like six weeks, mm -hmm. you know? And when you put it in that way, the after effects can be fatigue, body aches, mood swings, irritability, insomnia, loss of sex drive, trouble concentrating, overeating, especially towards carbs and sweets, and weight gain. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. Because that is all from... Stressed adrenals. That is actually adrenal fatigue. I think they go past it and they get into adrenal fatigue. I don't think they're burnt out. I mean, they're still functioning, but they're in adrenal fatigue because that's what happens. You can go into adrenal fatigue. If you're over age 40, you can go over adrenal fatigue in two weeks. Yeah, especially you keep on it for too long. Yep. Just... So let's kick this in the butt. Let's just do this, all right? Number one, how do you get you know prevent this from happening? Because I don't think it has to happen, people. Tanning beds. Tanning beds. <laughs> That's sad. I mean, I, yeah, I agree with you for the sad thing, right? But number one, manage the stress response. Follow the proper diet and exercise guidelines like we discussed yesterday. Guys, the response is real. You have to continue to manage it. You have to manage those adrenals. That's what the diet does. you got to manage the adrenals. So that's very important. So follow what we talked about yesterday or figure out something. But number two, you need to set your holiday plan. And that's why I'm doing it this week. God, this has to happen. Like, you have to do it this weekend before next week hits. Yeah, because next week's too late. It's starting. Once it starts, it's starting. You got Black Friday. You got this happening. You got everything starts to roll. So number two is set your holiday plan. First, schedule. set a schedule that you are in control of. In other words, you don't have to overcommit to everything. I can go to this one. I can't go to that one. I can do this. I can't do that. 
you can say no. It's okay. You know, so it's very important that you're in control of your schedule. Yes, it's not, it's going to be out, you know, of your normal realm of your schedule, but it's okay. You still are in control as long as you set it. So you look at your week and say, okay, I can go to this party. I can't go to this one. Or I'm going to eat at this one. I'm not going to eat at this one. Plan it. Yeah, this becomes a good time to master that because throughout the year, you're going to have events. And this is what... And yeah. yeah, if you can master the holiday season... You can do anything. Yeah. It should, you should use it as a training ground. Mm -hmm. Wax on, wax <laughs> off. Right? Holidays, wax on, wax off. So next, next in, in your holiday plan, set a holiday budget. Listen, money is the number one thing. It's the number one thing that really will stress people out, especially after the holidays. If you set a holiday budget and you track everything you're spending, it's so much you have this much, and Linda does it. She has this much for each person for a gift. This is what I'm going to spend. This is how it goes. And it's amazing to watch her operate this. It's almost like a machine, right? But if you do that, you laugh, right? Because it is. It's funny when you watch it. You track it. Because what that's going to do is you're going to start the new year without having this boulder sitting on top of you. That financial boulder could really could take you months to catch up. Months to catch up. Next, write out your expectation of the holidays. Now, this is really important. Get this out of the cage and onto paper. And then analyze this. And adjust accordingly. What do I mean by that? So, really sit down and do an exercise for yourself. This is a program. If you suffer from depression or sadness and these things happen, it's a program, people. Programs release, and that which release the emotions and the feelings and that. And if you get caught in that, that's what's going to burn you out during the holidays. I want you to enjoy these holidays, but I also want you to grow during the holidays. No better time to work on shifting your energy than during the holidays because the tribes are coming together. So first, you take out a piece of paper and just write out the expectations that you have in the holidays. I want Uncle Joe to be like this, and Betty to be like this, and Betty to be like this, and we're going to have this happen, and this happen, and this, and this is what I expect. And then look at it, and look at it, and say, wow, I cannot control other people. I can only control myself. So now you may change it a little bit, adjust it accordingly, and say, well, I'm going to keep my energy here, and I'm going to do this, and I am, I am, I am. And I guarantee you have a great holiday and you won't go, you won't get depressed because you're in control. And then finally in the plan, make a list of your priorities. What are your priorities? Because you know, like when we had the big companies, we had to go to those, you know, I had to go to all those parties, right? Different companies, different divisions. I had to go. That was actually a priority. You had to plan it. I didn't I couldn't say, I'm not going. <laughs> no, you're the owner of the company, you gotta go, right? <laughs> so so you have to make a list of your priorities. And there's some family, listen, I want to see in some family, I don't care if I do see. It's not a priority. I have priorities. I know who my priorities are. List your priorities, people. You don't have to make everybody happy. You can say no. It's a wonderful thing. That want of approval really sticks us in saying yes to everything. And that's so make a list of priorities. So that's setting your holiday plan. Number three, use what you've learned in stress mastery. Guys, watch the ego. Write about it. If you're in the climber community, I expect a lot. On the new platform, I finally got in there today. But, you know, you, know, you guys, you and Bruce are very, you know, tech savvy. Me, it's so easy to, I just me. You know, and so I'm in there. And I want to see stories of what's going on through the holidays. These are great times. Watch the ego. Let go. Be present. Work on being in the now. Watch yourself get rattled. What is getting rattled? Sit with it. Use the let go technique. Use what you've learned. And watch how your new year, instead of falling into the new year, you can fly into the new year. If you're in that red zone energy, you're like a boulder rolling down the mountain into the new year, or you can fly above it all. Four, focus on gratitude. Man, if I had to have one word to go through the holidays, gratitude. Be thankful. Be thankful for every single thing that comes in your life. Even Aunt Betty and Uncle Joe. Everybody's got them. But thank God you have them because that's what allows you to grow. If somebody rattles your cage, Hug them because you can't get rid of a program unless it's activated. So if somebody rattles you, it's a gift. That's your opportunity to get rid of 
the program that was rattling you in the first place. Number five, limit your consumption of alcohol. And I throw that out there as one by itself because a few eggnogs will lead to a few cookies, which will lead for David and I a couple apple pies. We would just say, <laughs> we know, right? We know if we're gonna if we're gonna drink, we know we're gonna eat. Better be on Christmas. It will be on. It will definitely be on a day, right? <laughs> because be we know our days, right? So limit your consumption of alcohol because it's almost impossible to have one or two drinks and keep yourself in the, in the, in the green zone. It really is. So decide, I'm going to drink or I'm not going to drink. And if you're going to drink, drink it to the hilt. <laughs> okay, bad wellness advice. One, All right. Two, three, four. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> Number six, be open. Just try to be open. New people, new things, new energies. And the final thing is be depressed. Go ahead and be depressed. Let the depression roll in. Let the darkness roll in. I guarantee it will subside. If you feel the depression's coming on, don't fight it. What you fight becomes stronger. Fuel to the fire. So, fuel to the fire. If you feel you're getting depressed, my advice is sit and be depressed and watch it. So if Nelson's getting depressed, watch Nelson get depressed and watch what happens happens to it anytime i get in a funk i sit with it and i'm, I'm just like why why ask your ask your ego that and then one or two things gonna happen you're gonna realize like okay my ego is not responding he's just making me feel this way or she or two you're gonna feel stupid for being depressed because your ego is not responding you're like <laughs> yeah. why am i feeling like this you know and the thing is if the program can be released mm -hmm. you would never have this depression again so if this is happening to you every holidays, and you know who you are, you got to be honest with yourself. Really be honest? If this happens to you every holiday, guess what? It's not a syndrome. It's a freaking program. And if it's a program, it can be released. Yeah, if somebody called you and said, hey, the holidays are canceled, you'd feel great. <laughs> so you're not really depressed. Exactly. Okay? It's the program. Because if they cancel the holidays, the program doesn't get activated, exactly. right? So you want the program to get activated. You actually are okay. If depression comes in, be depressed. Sit with it, watch it, look at it, release it, let it go. Can I allow this? Could I let it go? Would I let it go? When I surrender this to whoever you want to surrender it to. Mm -hmm. And then watch how your holidays rise. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a state of depression. So, I mean, to create a shift in the planet, just, I don't know. It's just weird. It's been a weird day. It took us like six takes to start because of Super Millennials. Because there's only 40 days left till Christmas. You're a clown. You really are a clown. So our mission, we actually have, do have a mission here. It's to create a shift in the planet. If you would like to join us on this mission, and you can join the party, you simply like, share, and subscribe in the links below. As always, until next time... Stay inspired! <laughs>